losing coral reefs here in Florida, in the greater Caribbean, all around the world is going to have rippling impacts and consequences. Here at the University of Miami's Coral Lab, researchers are hard at work in a race against rapidly rising temperatures to save the only coral reef system in the continental U.S. What's most alarming is that it's incredibly hot for this time of year. We are seeing ocean temperatures that we normally only see in August and September if we see them at all. Florida's reef has taken a beating over the last four decades, losing more than 90% of its live cover to pollution, hurricanes, and consistently warming water. We're going to see pretty significant bleaching and mortality over the reef. It's going to be like walking through a rainforest after a wildfire. And experts fear it's about to get worse. Ocean temperatures have surged past old record highs, the coral teetering on their tipping point. This comes as an intensifying heat wave stretches out of the ocean and across the country. It seems to be uh, an entire swath from west to east, so everywhere from southern parts of California all the way across Nevada, Arizona, and into the eastern seaboard. From Phoenix, Arizona, where they broke their previous record with 20 consecutive days of more than 110 degree heat to El Paso, Texas, which has annihilated its past record of 23 days at more than 100 degrees. They are now at 35 in a row and no end in sight. And it's not just the U.S. But some of the, the, the high temperatures that we're seeing in parts of the, the Middle East and um, the Eastern Hemisphere are approaching values that are gonna be at or beyond the limit that the human body. Earth's hottest 17 days ever recorded by human instruments have all been measured this month. We expected this to be a hot year because of El Nino, a recurring warming of surface waters in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. But human-induced climate change has definitely had a hand in amplifying the natural warming of our planet. And it's not just heat. Climate change also has been known to amplify extreme weather events, like the catastrophic flooding that we've seen in Mississippi, Vermont, and New York over the last couple of weeks. When it comes to excessive precipitation, it's falling um, in heavier short bursts, but it's also falling in very, very um, high rainfall rates. So like two, three inches and more in an hour. And if that much rain falls that quickly, it doesn't have a chance to actually seep into the ground. Here in the Florida Keys, the heat has officials and researchers on high alert. And is what we're seeing right now the hottest? Yes. Yeah, across southeast Florida, uh, down in the Keys, it's the hottest it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Since we at least know. Since measurements began. And given the trends, mm -hmm. it's very safe to say that it's the hottest it's ever been. This year, the high pressure system that typically brings refreshing trade winds to Florida is further south and weaker. We've had relatively calm winds compared to normal. Um, and so without that evaporative cooling from the winds blowing over the water, the water just sits and cooks. It's like our fan was turned off or yeah. or maybe a lid was put on the boiling pot right. boils faster. Right. It's causing ocean temperatures to rise into the low, mid and even upper 90s, up to 7 degrees above average with no sign of a cool down anytime soon, posing a threat to the vital coral reefs that protect and serve the keys. Coral reefs have many different benefits to humans. The reef itself is habitat for so many other species that we depend on in our economy, you know, lobsters and commercially important fish species. And when we lose the corals that build those reefs and it no longer breaks the wave energy, it comes right up onto our beaches and our condos and everything else along the coast. It's nature's natural fence. It's nature's seawall. A mass coral die-off would be devastating. About 25% of all marine life depend on the reef for survival. It also brings billions of dollars of revenue into Florida through fishing and tourism. For corals, if they have a year or two to recover, then they can keep up with that. But if we are just hitting record high, record high, record high every summer, they don't get that chance to recover. That is when you will pretty much always see bleaching and ultimately some mortality. Carrie O'Neill is a senior scientist with the Florida Aquarium's Center for Coral Conservation. Her team has been helping rehabilitate Florida's reef by breeding the strongest coral possible to withstand a warming climate, raising baby coral in their ocean greenhouse. 
Four years ago, they planted 200 coral. They've been thriving about five miles south of Layton, Florida. So the team came out to monitor this site a few weeks ago, and the corals were looking pretty good. But our water temperatures at that time were 91 degrees on the, on the dive computer. So that's concerning. It's concerning because the Florida Keys just this week got put to the highest level of warning for coral bleaching. Oftentimes, that means the coral is losing some of its nutrition and it can lead to that coral dying. What does it look like? It'll really just look white, a very, very pale. You really don't know what we're going we to We really see. don't know. We really don't know. Um, the staff might come up high-fiving or they might come up in tears. Here we go. Here we go. Within seconds, we saw it. So we've been looking at several patches. It's all, it's all white. It's dead. That means within the last two weeks, bleached, gone. While we'll have to wait for Noah to make a full report, this will likely be the worst bleaching event the Florida Keys has ever seen. Is this worst case scenario? Um, from what we can tell so far, yeah. Immediately when we went in, you saw white. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, big patches. Uh, as soon as I put my face in the water, my heart dropped into my stomach for sure. It's a lot of work to be lost in 10 days due to high seawater temperatures. But they're not losing hope. Parents of these corals are being housed in nurseries across the state of Florida. Scientists will breed them again to try to make what they hope is a stronger generation. The thing that really needs to, to stop is warming climate. Well, we're not gonna give up. Humans have caused this problem, but humans can also solve this problem. These are a threatened species, so it's really important that while they're here, we're giving them the best conditions possible. That's exactly what the humans back at the University of Miami are also working to do. This is where we test the viability of coral reef intervention strategies, which you can think of as like reef biohacking to increase corals resilience to bleaching during ocean warming. As extreme heat continues to break records across the globe, researchers hope that it spurs heightened awareness and investment in defending this essential resource. I am optimistic for the future. I think that we cannot give up on coral reefs. Coral reefs are far too important to the health of our oceans as well as humanity as a whole. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.